it's your boy, Mr. Black. It's another edition of the Mr. Black Show. This is the first one for 2021. I know, guys, it's been a while, but yo, the brother got his mental together. The brother's going to continue dropping these dope episodes throughout the whole year. Yes, 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 the kid is back. Please subscribe, like, comment, and click that bell icon for more Mr. Black episodes. And please check out the other the other shows on the Jabba Tears Network. Your um, so Sosom Talk, I, um, the, my second podcast, the Jabba Tears Podcast, for many different points of views of life, from wrestling, from relationship advice, from sports. So please check out the Jabba Tears Network and continue to be a fan of the Mr. Black Show. Of course, I have my homegirl, my lovely guest, Jessica Santana. I call her I call her a tree hugger because she because when I call her, she went from eating meat that she was like, yeah, man, I can't be eating meat no more, man. Yeah, man, you got to love these trees. You got to do all of that. I'm looking at her like, what are you talking about? But well, comes to find out, she was low-key ahead of her time because now that was like, what, four years ago? Three years ago? Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. Three About years four. ago. And now... And four or five. Four, let's say four, for argument's sake. Four years. Now you ask me, yeah, Mr. Mike, how do you feel about vegetarian? Yeah, man, I'm thinking about doing vegetarian work and all that. But, yo, she's obviously doing the Lord's work out here, encouraging people oh, to eat right. It. You know, she's um, she's doing her thing out here, man. Man, Jess, man, how you feeling, man? How you feeling, uh-huh. man? Give yourself a round of <laughs> Jess, man. <laughs> I love that. That's so cute. Thank so, you. Um, Phil, start- I love it. How you doing? I'm 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 doing very well. I feel good. Um, yeah, I I feel good. I'm doing good. Like mm-hmm. no complaints. There's no complaints on this side. I'm good. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> just let's just get to the meat and potatoes of the thing. How was your 2020? Oh. My 2020 was definitely awakening, like, to say the least. Like, it was, like, it was intense. I I, I think it was intense in such a good way. Elaborate. Um, It it allowed me to... I feel like for, for for, for most of the year, I was... I was happy. I was getting to what I had to do. Like, um, I didn't really let anything outside of myself distract me. Um, and it was it was enlightening. Like I learned so much about myself. I um I got a chance to really resolve some inner some some inner tom- some some turmoil that I had within myself and it was just it was a lie, but in such a good way. Like in such a good way. I I can't even front. It was it I, it was good. I I think it if I wanna if I wanna summarize 2020 for me it was it was good. It was a good year. So what are hmm, what are three things that you learned about yourself last year? Oof, okay. I learned. I definitely learned my self-worth I learned that um I learned I learned about I learned my self-worth I was someone that um that gave herself very freely to the people that she loved and with like with no expectations and I I realized that that wasn't healthy um I learned that the people closest to you are, whether you want, whether you like it or not, are not going to grow with you. And they're not going to come with you along the, they're not going to come, they're not going to come, they're not going to come on the journey with you. They're not going to come along. And that, um, that my healing is no one's responsibility but but my own. I learned I honestly learned how to take accountability for myself. So what's the third thing? Um the third thing would be 
it would be accountability. I, I feel like I learned my self-worth. I learned to let go and I learned to be accountable. So knowing your value, holding yourself accountable and learn to let go. Yep. So would you say that a year ago you was a different person? Like, do you felt that you grew spiritually? I definitely did. I definitely did. I, um, I saw this. I did. I, I, I definitely am. Just because of where my, my, my head, where I'm at mentally. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. I'm, in, I'm in such, I'm in such a better place. Like, it's, it's, I'm in such a more, it, like, I've gained so much clarity mm. in, in, in this last year. So, to be where I'm at now is, like, I feel like that had to happen for me to be where I'm at now. Because I think now is where, like, the real work comes in. <laughs> I definitely agree. I definitely agree. I think one of the common themes with our generation is a lot of us didn't have that guidance, you know, like our parents tried their best and Mm -hmm. we are literally the first real generation who actually take going to therapy. Um, We don't say crystal sage is of the devil. We understand this is part of our past. You Mm -hmm. understand? And when you understand who, we, like, we took the more time to understand who we are as people compared to our parents. Because mm-hmm. there are situations where I have talked to people around our parents' age, and I be looking at them, and I say, why are you so bitter? At one point, at, where at one point in your life where your pettiness turned to bitterness? And how can I not be bitter when I reach your age? And with us, we go into therapy. Like I said earlier, we go into therapy. We actually find out who we are on a spiritual level and also on a mental level. And the fact that you said the three things that seems to be a common theme among a lot of our peers that self-worth, accountability, and knowing who we are as people is hard because a lot of us just follow trends and we keep following trends. So, dang. So, let me ask you a question. Wow. I <laughs> I just stopped doing that. Nigga, it's your show, nigga. Anyways, uh, um you silly. <laughs> how do how how were you able to accomplish those three things? What methods did you use? Oh man. Um first of all, it was a lot of crying involved. A lot. Like it was so much crying. Um and I had to really get out of my own way. I had to get out of my own way. Um, and of course, you know, I've been reading a lot of books. So, um, my, one of my spiritual teachers, she's like, yo, she, 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 she says to like paraphrase, um, when are you, when are you going to start putting into play what you've been reading? Like, so I'm like, yo, for real, like I read all these quote unquote self-help books. But they're just, right now, they're just like, they're just like, I'm grasping it mentally, but physically, I'm not embodying it. So I'm like, no, it's time for me to, you know, actually put into play what I've been reading, what I've been learning. So um, the first, when, if, when everything first started, I had just finished reading a book titled Anatomy of the Spirit. Mm. Anatomy? by Caroline Miss. In short, what the book is, re- is it, it talks about is how we, um, we, we, tr- we, have tr- we, we have trapped emotions in the body and how they show up, how they show up, whether it's an illness, an ache, like an, an ailment, like how they show up in the body. And at the beginning of it, you know, I, I work out. I work out a lot. So it's, it's, it's fair to say that my body is sore. I understand that my body gets sore. But I was having, like, some pain, like, right here on my neck. And 
after I read that book, I'm like, yo, like I know what this pain is from. And after I spent like a whole day, a, ho- a whole day crying, because it was like, uh, it was like a, from morning to night, I had to like sit down and have like a real conversation with my mom. And like, I had to like really like build the courage up to be like, yo, Jess, you have to have this conversation because it, you, it, it's time. Like you, you mentally, you're like, you're fighting it mentally. You're not mentally is like in a, a real negative space. Like you're, it's, it's so, it's so big that you're starting to feel it physically. So I had to sit down and have a conversation with my mom. And I was like, you know, I told her, I was like, listen, like, I love you, but this is how I I feel. This is how I've been feeling. And I am tired of feeling this way. I'm tired of feeling this way. My body hurts and I'm just tired. I don't want to feel this way anymore. And after I like had that conversation with her, I felt the ease entering my body like I felt it I felt it and I'm like you know something if if this is what happened when I actually like stand up for myself then this is what I'm going to continue to actually do because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna sit here and be in a negative space or be in physical pain because of anybody else Okay, so basically, is you actually put in the um, you actually did the work from what you was yeah. reading, and yeah. from actually putting the work, is you actually had a conversation with your mother, real candid conversation on how you feeling. Mm-hmm. How did she receive? How did she, how did she initially receive that? She, you know, um. She was kind of receptive, but not really. But like I like like I like I had said earlier, I this year made me realize that my healing is my responsibility. So I really didn't do it for her to validate it. I just needed to get it out. I so how did to you, get it out? So how did that relationship change after that? We were we you know it's. Um, it's been it's it's been like up and down. It's been up and down because then after that, you know, after that, <laughs> yo, I've been reading so much still. After that, I read um, I read a book titled Energetic Boundaries, and then that was another game changer. I'm like, oh, so now I gotta set boundaries with people. Jesus Christ. So, what are <laughs> some of the things? Obviously, you, you, you learn how to set boundary through that book. But what else yeah. did you learn about sending, sending, setting boundaries that the people may not know? Um, that they're about me. They're not about anyone else. And that I, like I, that. I, 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 I set them right for my own peace of mind. And it's not necessarily putting walls up. It's not. Because it might seem that way, but they're for my own inner peace. So what's the difference what's the difference between putting a wall up and having boundaries? Putting a wall well, the way I kinda see it, view it, is putting a wall when when you put a wall up, you're not receptive like you're blocking everything, right? With um, whether it's good or bad, um, and with like a with with a boundary, um, to me, it's it's healthy. It's, it's something healthy. Like you, I remember I I was having a conversation with a friend, and I and you know I set a boundary with her, and I was like, listen. Um, I know this is what's going on right now, but I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to give my energy to this. And it's been something that has kept my peace of mind, you know, like it's kept me at peace. And I I feel like, 
I'm not sure if I'm explaining it correctly, but putting because I I I don't know if I I don't know if I put walls up. I probably have, but I haven't I haven't been able to like differentiate the difference. If that makes sense. Because I don't no. think I've put well, I don't think I've put any walls up, but I do feel like I have set healthy boundaries. Okay, okay. I think what I gather from what you're saying, just to clear it up for the audience, is a wall is you're not letting anything in. That's it. No matter who the person, good or bad, you're not letting that person in at all. It's gonna. It's just a wall. That's it's it's, it's for your personal your. You have a wall up because you're hiding. And I won't say hiding, but you're protecting. you your you are protecting yourself from the world. That's how I took it when you when you say a wall up. Boundaries is yeah. you letting people in, but you're understanding that, but you're telling them that this is what I'm tolerating and not tolerating. Yes. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Like. Exactly. Like. Like, like you letting the person, you are setting the tone for that relationship. Exactly. And what I realized, the, what, one of the most common theme within just, just in life in general is people don't put the same effort into non-romantic relationship as they do into a romantic relationship. Because, hear me out, everybody will go to, for their, when it comes to their partner, Love language. Oh, take the love language test. You see, <laughs> you read, you read, you read thousands of books. You go to couples therapy. Do all that. Talk to your friends. Well, blah 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 blah. You do all the work in to make sure that romantic relationship works. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to your other relationships, such as family, friends, um, relationship between you and your boss, just I mean, I I characterize that professional relationship. You suck at it because you shut down. You don't put in the work in. But then you don't realize that the same exact way that you put in the work in for your boyfriend or your girlfriend, whoever you're dating, you got to put in the same exact work for every relationship because every relationship require different instructions. Because, mm -hmm. for example, certain one of your boundaries may be, I don't like people touching my hair at all. That's just, that's just a super hypothetical question. And that's your boundaries. And, but yet, you will tell that to your lover, but you won't tell that to your mom your friends and others, oh, no, 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 you get so fed up. And then you carry that frustration in other places because mm -hmm. you didn't put in the work in and sending those boundaries and getting to know the people, love language, like you did for your lover. That's mm -hmm. why I'm learning. The fact that you went and talked to your mom and had an honest conversation and you, and you, and you didn't did it for the validation or the reaction, you just did it because I need to heal – that's that that's that says a lot about you and your character. So keep on doing that. Keep on putting the work in. Cause listen, I know it's hard. Trust me. It was. Um, it, it, it was. It was. It was definitely difficult too. Like I, especially because you know I live with her. So the fact that I live with her is like, I, I'm like in her energy bubble. This, I've I'm never heard her that before. Ed, energy I'm, bubble. I like that. I'm I'm in her energy bubble, you know, and I am literally consuming everything that she throws at me. Like everything. So it's like when I read when I read um the book Energetically Energetic Boundaries by Cindy Dale, I know I realized that I don't have to do that. Like I don't have I don't have to absorb your energy, your energy is your energy, and my energy is mine. Energy. Like we could, we could have, we we like my my energy is my is in my own. Like I'm in my own bubble. I don't have to be in your bubble. And I learned that re by reading that book because I didn't even know that I was doing it. Some people call it empathy, um, and and to me, it's just being in mesh being so enmeshment with someone like you don't want to be enmeshed with someone you want someone to be them and you want to be yourself like you don't want to be someone else yes i'm sorry everybody for that interruption 
Um, it was a low key. It was one of those things that they was cooking and something got burned and the alarm oh, went okay. off in the hallway. So, cause I'm oh, chilling okay. there, I'm listening. I was just like, what is that? Like I hear it. I'm listening to you. And then when you like, wait, have you ever talked to somebody and then you kind of get so into the conversation and then you just zone into it and then it'd be like little things. You hear it. There you go. It gets loud. loud you look like, what is that? So that's what happened. So dang. Um, What's the last thing that we was talking about? Um, I don't hear you. I can't hear you. Like you sound so far away. Good, perfect. Can you hear me now? Perfect. Yes. Um, okay. let's talk about energy. The point yeah. is of you said you was talking about your mother, you being your mother's energy bubble, your, yeah. your um, your energy bubble, right? Yes. Her energy energy bubble. bubble. Yes, and that's not you shouldn't take in her energy. You have. She has her energy, and you have your own energy. And, okay. So, how how does one somebody cleanse their energy? I, I do a few things to, like, cleanse. Um, I, I sage. I... I take flower essences, um, yeah, medicine, flower medicine. I drink my herbal teas. Um, I meditate. I also, I pray a lot. Okay. I, um, I do breath work. I do sound healing. I do a lot. Like, it's it's that was a lot. lot. Okay, we're going to break down each and every one of them. <laughs> For let's let's start with the one I'm familiar with, um, saging. Why is saging so important? And it's been on a rise of popularity, especially among millennials. Why is saging so important? And how do one properly sage their energy? Um, well, energy is good to to cleanse your space. I sometimes I don't know. It's it's like an inner knowing. I just get like the inner knowing to sage because I might feel like I might feel some like negativity, and I'm like, okay, let me sage. But how do you do sage and, properly? Yeah. Um, I think everyone has their own practice. I usually um, but I will say that um, when you do sage, to have like a window or a door open so the so the energy you're trying to remove could have somewhere to go. Like, because if you just stage and all your windows and doors are closed, you're just going to keep that same energy in the space. I agree. Mm. Yeah. So, um, yeah. That's, I, when I, when I stage, it, like, I, like I mentioned, it's usually an inner knowing that I get. Like, I had, like, one, there was an instance, there, there was this brand, like, I was, my friend, I was going somewhere with her, and she was with her friend, and um, her friend had came upstairs to my house to use the bathroom, mm -hmm. and she, it was real quick, it was like a real quick transaction, like she came in, used the bathroom, and went back downstairs. Out of, like, before I went down, because I was going to go down and meet them, something told me, Sage. And I staged, I cleansed my crib, and I was like, all right, cool, boom, I did it. When I went downstairs, um, that I get in the car with them, it was like, it was like maybe like 10, 15 minutes later, her, she, was, she was in a, she was in like a bad mood. She was in a bad mood, and her mood, like without me even knowing, like, was in my crib like she came in my crib with her bad mood and something told me like nah sage and get that get that get that energy out get that yeah so I was like okay so then when I I was like now I know why I staged I was like okay got it mm, like, so where do you get your sages from like you gotta you know help out the the, the brother out so like you know my audience out there maybe in your area like oh yeah Jessica Santana you know she <laughs> she, she recommended this so where do you get your sages from 
I get my sage, well, I used to get my sage from Spiritually Sparkled. It's in the Bronx. It's like this, herb, like this urban botanica. Um, but I think, I think the actual physical spot is closed. I do believe that they still have the online website. And of course, I think of course. you, I think you could buy sage online, but that's where I used to get mine. So it's called, um, Spiritually spiritual, spark, spiritually sparkled, spiritually sparkled. Yeah. Yo, what kind of gentrified? I actually kind of like that name low key. It's beautiful. And it, and it's not gentrified. They're like when you meet the owner, the owner. Mm, no, 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 no. Bring it back. I can't hear you. <laughs> the owner is so dope. Like, she's just so beautiful. And, like, her family, her mom, they're very much into, like, the spiritual world and, like, the spiritual realm. It's nothing, like, gentrified of, of it, like, about it. Like, there's nothing that, like, when you go, you, you'll, in, you'll immediately feel that, nah, this is real. This is not BS. Mm, so... For all for all my viewers out there, part of the Black Pack, you hear that spiritually sparkle that's in the Bronx. Um, she's not too sure, but definitely check them out online and support your local business, especially during this pandemic. Yes. Dang, support, support, support. The yes. the the link will definitely be in the, be in the um, description below. Um, yeah, definitely says with. With my journey and saging, because I got into saging, um, not too. I got into saging last year, um, but I really got into it this year. And you're right, you just feel the difference. And I do the same thing too. Open a window, and I just, especially when you sleep with the sage on, yo, woo -hoo! you wake up like a brand new person. Dang, man, <laughs> dang, it's just like. You're happier. It clears out the body. Um, yo, saging is low key dope, but yet they taught us that saging was bad and is of the devil. I look at it this way, man. If it's of the devil, then pff, what's of God then? Because if this healing is this, is this changing the atmosphere in, 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 your, in your space, bring you joy, how can that be of the devil? I'm like, I'm not talking about naughty joy, like, you know, something I'm supposed to do, like, legit joy that there's no consequence for this. So why, how is this, how is this of the devil? I never understood that. So, saging, of course, that's definitely important to you. You mentioned meditating. How, what is the proper way to, how, how do you meditate? Um, I started off meditating with um, Headspace. I think I started with Headspace. Maybe like four years ago, five. Space. I did that. Yeah, Headspace is really dope. Yeah, Head Start. Yeah, Headspace. I believe is an app. Um, I know about it's, Space. Yeah, it's a super dope. Like I started off with that about five years ago, and then I started. Then after that, when I felt like I I outgrew that one, I I went with Calm, Calm application. That one was really like. It was really dope. Like, it was, what makes them? It, um, what's the pros and cons? Like, what's the biggest difference between Calm and Headspace? Okay, so Headspace for me, I don't know how it is now, but when I was using it, it was really like for for the runner, because you know, I'm like, I'm a runner, I'm into fitness, so it was for. I understood it. I understood it to be for the athlete that's like active, you know getting in motion and stuff and they're really short they're short meditation they're like 10 minutes i think maybe 15 the most mm -hmm. but they're like short meditations as opposed to headspace i mean calm that it gives you the option you could do a five minute meditation you could do 10 minute meditation or you could do 30 40 minute, minute meditation and they give you a variety like it's not just one specific category like one that was really um that really helped me was um what was it i think for forgiveness and kindness and forgiveness i think that was the the actual name of the meditation but that was really that was that was really good and then after that that lasted about like a year then after that my cousin put me on to like actual just 
meditation music. Cause I was on YouTube. All, yeah. All this, all this was still guided meditation. Like the headspace, the, the calm is all guided meditation. Then when I graduated, then I started to just <laughs> listen. When I started to just listen to the actual music and actually like sit with myself and guide myself through the process, that's when I was like, whoa, okay. Now I just listen to um to meditation music by, by what is it by by Nereo, um sounds. You know, the the, the hurts, the, the Come on, fourth. Man. Come the on. Four seventeen. <laughs> I know about five. all of those. And like the yeah. certain sound that makes you high. The frequencies, the frequencies. Yeah, of course. Of course. Like yeah. I really I my me and myself got into um the frequencies and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like one of the things I do at work is I take a power nap and I listen to it. Yo. The description they be saying is just for energy and stuff like that. Ever since I've been doing that consistently, it really does help. Cause I wake it up. <sighs> Yeah, I feel like I conquered the whole world. <laughs> it's, 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 it hit different dogs. So, mm-hmm. is there any technique you got to do when you meditate? Because, um, you know, traditionally, you always see people Indian style doing this and stuff like that. It's, do you have to do that? Or, I... you, or you can just lay down in your bed on a chair, listen to, um, putting your um, headphones in, close your eyes and meditate like is there certain techniques you have to do when you meditate i don't think so i think you do whatever you feel comfortable doing you feel like if you want to lay down and meditate that is fine if you want to sit indian style meditate that is fine if you want to stand and meditate that is fine like i i don't think that there's just one take like this just this is not just one solid technique everybody does what Fits them. Um, yeah, what's comfortable for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. And I'm uh, I'm going to try calm. I'm definitely going to try calm because I did try a, a, a guided medic- um, medication meditation <laughs> once. It was recently. I had like, um, I don't remember. You remember matter of fact, we're not going to use no names <laughs> here. Okay. okay. <laughs> it was a particular um, MDO. Where where I work at is MDO is equivalent to a manager. And mm-hmm. I came upstairs, I came from overtime, it was a Sunday, and I could tell I grew as a person because I did other form of meditation because every every, every day I wake up 4.30, 4 o'clock, sometimes 3 o'clock. To this day, I, I don't understand why. And I would take a, I roll up, get a slip, smoke, and I just sit there in silence and just think about life and just letting go the past days but today we was talking she said i said good morning you know how i am always laughing and smiling I said, good morning and she ignored me and she said i was, I was just like okay mad rude <laughs> mad calm she said oh it's not a good morning try to embarrass me and she's a dark-skinned woman and she is black one thing i'm learning is my voice has so much power, and I don't raise my voice very. I may raise my if I'm getting ha ha, but yelling and yelling, raise my voice to belittle somebody. I don't do that. I try not to do that because you don't want that person to do that to you. And sometimes people just have bad days. So I said, whatever. I looked at her. I was just like, the supervisor came. He's like, oh, this is my supervisor. I was like, his name is Sean. I was like, I'm not going to use it. My bad. I said, yo, bro, where you want me to go? I said, yo, put me in the back because I'm going to spaz on her because I really was going to spaz on her. But I had to keep keep a composure. So I went upstairs on my break and I, get, I did guided meditation. Ten minutes. Man, life changing. Guided medica- meditation is life changing. I felt, I just felt like a weight on my heart just went like, wow. I just felt, ah. And I didn't know, like, I didn't, I didn't, dang, I didn't know that Calm was able to do that. Like, I heard of Calm um, talk space, but I never used it because eh, it's, it's, it's not for me. But now, how you advertise it, I'm definitely going to check it out. And viewers, please check out Calm and Headspace and let me know what you think of it. You feel me? Comment below. So, let's talk about, um, let's, 
Um, do you um what so you have done the work, you have done the mental work and everything like that. So now now let's talk about why are you a vegan and why you think everyone else should adopt that vegan lifestyle or somewhat limit the intake of a meat. Okay. Um, I became vegan uh, close to five years now. Yeah, it's been it's, a while. It's been, a, it's, it's been about five years. I think mm-hmm. I make I think I make five years in May of mm-hmm. this year. Mm-hmm. Um, it was something that I wanted to try, and I was with with a partner at that time, and I want to say he he kind of he introduced me to it, and. When I started, when I felt the immediate change in my physical body, I was like, "Oh no, this is it. This is it. This is this is this is what this is gonna this is what's working for me." And it was something that, on a on a physical level, made me feel lighter. Made me feel like better. Like I felt better. And then on a mental, on a mental note, like, I, it was just, like, my thinking started clearing up. Like, what I was thinking, I was feeling, like, everything was starting to, like, clear up. And I'm like, oh, okay. This is lit. This is hella lit. And I know you, I know, I know you, you said, why should anybody do it? I had a, a stage in my life where I was like a, a very fierce advocate for it and I was trying to convert everyone. That was that, everything. That was that was that quickly backfired. And now I'm at a place where um I just suggest to people people, you know, to do their research and do what worked for them. Do your research and 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 see what works for you, because you know it's it's a lot. You know, there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of information, and you know what 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 was working for me might not work for you, and it's something that you know I learned along the years. Because when I first started, I was like, no, don't eat this because um it has this this and that, and it causes this this and that like. <laughs> You stupid. I, like, I was a maniac. <laughs> I was a maniac. And then I was like, you know something? It's none of my business. What what you eat, what you consume, what you choose to eat, what you choose to consume is none of my business. Like, I you agree. know, you, you, you'll you come to your truth at your own time. Like, but, but it's something, I mean, it has really helped me physically, like, um my my skin my i i just it's i i i i am i feel the benefits like i i'm reaping the benefits mm, like, mm. Mm-hmm. so we done talk like at least 40 minutes i got to ask you this like what's up why the markings on your face and what are they called oh the mar- yo you know something i've been doing this for so long that I kind of forget that they're there. Like I do them. It's, I want to say, I want to say, my markings are like a ritual to me because I do them every day. And when people look at me and like comment, like comp, like comment on them, I'm like, oh shit, I forgot I had them. But um, to me, to me, I, I feel like. To me, as a form of self-expression, I had someone recently put it into a like a different perspective, and I was like, "Oh, okay." Like I never like really thought, but to me, it was just like I put them because I want to. I like how I look with them, um, and I think because I've because I've like I I've evolved with them. They have become part of like my spirituality mm. someone someone the other day complimented them and said I like how you are able to like accentuate your your beauty without 
all the makeup. And I was like, um, oh, okay. Thank you. I received that. <laughs> <laughs> I received that. I received that. But yeah, they they're definitely they definitely have become part of my my spirituality. Like So what's the goal. meaning behind it? The meanings behind them, I usually I you know, I I always say because I always do three dots that my my dots mean Yep, I yep, I know. <laughs> my dots are, you know, my mind, body and spirit and the unity within no three. So yeah. <laughs> so and then there's no like spiritual value to it it's just you just like it yes and no yes and no like i want to hear the yes part <laughs> um like i just said like you know they have been part of my 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 spiritual um my spiritual path and there's something that i feel connected to i feel connected to them in such a And like such a like I want to say like a deeper level, and I I was someone that that used to love makeup. I used to love wearing makeup, and then when I finally realized that I didn't have to wear all that, that I could just you know like accentuate my face, like decorate it. I guess I'm like oh I could do this all the time. So it's not it's not um it's not. Not that it's not, but it also like I know that it it also pays homage to you know my ancestors. It's also like and mm. it and it's and it's kind of and it's part of my individualism. Like, mm. I I want to say that my individualism is at the forefront. So, do you is there do you freestyle it? Or do you have like do you on the internet and say, Oh, I see you girl, I'm taking that look. What's up? Mm-hmm. Like explain it. No, I free I freestyle it. I freestyle it. I always freestyle it. I always do my three dots. But then um sometimes, sometimes I do when I see someone and I'm like, Oh, I like how that looks. Like I'll try it out and then but I don't do it like because you know, when you see artists online, they do it and it's like I want to say it's loud, like it's loud, but it's beautiful because yeah. beautiful. I, I think it's beautiful. It's beautifully loud. Mm. Um, I'll look and I'm like, oh, maybe I could do that, but like a little more subtle, like something to that fits you. That will fit, yeah, that fits me, and that's you know, and then I just do that. I'll go with the flow. Like sometimes I just do the three dots. Some some days yeah. I'll do. I'll be extra and I'll accentuate my face a little more. And some other days, I just I'll just do the three dots and just leave everything else alone. So what is what is what do you the what you do to your face? What what exactly is it called? What do you mean? Like you know how people let's say somebody's going to war. They said I put this. To fit, to like, to, to like, um, to like scare my enemies. This is my war paint. You understand? So, is there like a a name for what you do, or is just people just expressing mm-hmm. itself through their face? Nah, it's not that deep. Um, oh. <laughs> it's not that deep. Uh, I'm weak. No. I'm weak. <laughs> It's, Shorty it's said it's not deep. that deep. It's not that deep. Yeah, you so you gotta be honest. Like, um. <laughs> Nah, it's just, I, I guess it's just uh, me is my form of expressing myself. Like, I, because I don't do the, the heavy makeup anymore, this is my way of expressing myself. This is your makeup. new makeup. Yeah, this is my new makeup. Dang. <laughs> I'm thinking that it had a particular name. I think it would uh, take me down the river and start, start humming like, hmm. No, you can I'm, if you want. <laughs> oh man, that is funny. That's I mean I mean I get it. It's just it's kind of like how you express yourself through your face. Some people express themselves through their tattoos. Certain people yeah. express themselves through their clothing. Certain people express themselves the more obvious way through their how they talk. 
And even then, when you express yourself through talking, there's actually different levels to that. Because some people express themselves through, they're always loud. Some people express themselves by throwing out 500 different big words just to say that this is how I express myself. I'm looking at them like, you could have just said that. (laughs) Or you could have just said that, I like like cheese. You went through this whole journey. (laughs) There was all these big words that went over my head. Even though that I know probably like half of them, but the other half I'm looking like... This nigga showing off, man. Like you ain't Ti. You don't have to un- unnecessary <laughs> use big words. But that's how to express himself, and that's what I'm learning. And people express themselves different ways. You know, certain people express themselves the most obvious way through how should I explain this? Through the obvious. Some people express themselves different, un- unique ways. You probably see on the internet the guy, you know, morph his whole body to look like a reptile, or yeah. somebody. Ex- um, morph the whole body to look like a celebrity. That's just yeah. their way to express it himself. And it also go in line with what you, what you mentioned. I don't hammer people being a vegan because let people live their life. You can do whatever you want to do, and that kind of correlate what you what I got. What you said about your how you express yourself is people do whatever they want to do. You're not hurting nobody. So and, and yeah, it's, and it's and it's also because I also do have tattoos. This is my art. To me, my tattoos and my face paint is my art. And this is how I express myself. If you say that, dang, I don't want to go dark, but we're going to die anyway. If, yeah, we are. Niggas are everyday V. Like, that's mm-hmm. like, like, you can't escape death. You, you, man, that's I'm going a little tense. Right. Yeah. And I guess you know about this. Me almost, me almost dying gave me a new relief on life. Like, Life is too short. Don't take nothing seriously. And like we were talking about before in the bloom and in, in pre-production, we talked about that. And life, you can't take a lot of stuff personally. And like you mentioned earlier that you start getting illness from it. You know, how many times have you heard older people where they always worry and they always say like, nigga, you always mother effing sick. How, nigga? Like, how? Your mood system cannot be that bad. Like, I see you do all this healthy stuff. But then you start realizing, like, oh, shoot, they're always worrying. They're always, they, their mind's always going. They don't have time to really heal at all. And once the head go, everything else follows. A lot of people don't understand that, the importance of <sighs> mental health. Because without that, everything else falls through. So, wow, I low-key learned a lot today about meditation, about how you express yourself and all of that. Man, so... Dang. So, oh, man. So, you mentioned the third thing you mentioned earlier. I'm going to bring it back. How do one person let go of the past? reason why I ask that because a lot of people live with, with a lot of regrets. A lot. And some people can't move past what happened in the past because it hurt them so much. So, how were you able to overcome the thinking back in the past, letting that worrying your current. How are we able to overcome that? I think it was a lot of a lot of forgiveness. I had to forgive myself for a lot. And why yourself? Well, I to me forgiveness is not is not ever about the other person. It's about yourself. Um for either for either reacting, not reacting for however you showed up. And um, I had to, I had to learn how to let go because I had to come to terms with accepting that some people are not gonna change. And accepting that, um, that where I'm going, I can't bring everyone with me. And it was, it was a lot of, it was definitely a lot of forgiveness. Like I had to heal. I had to forgive myself for, I had to, and you know, it's not so much, no, I don't want to say not so much, but myself and others. Because not everybody's going to apologize, but you still have to forgive them anyway. Because if not, then it turns into bitterness. It turns into resentment. 
it turns into anger. It turns into all these other emotions that are not even worth it. Like, your peace of mind is not worth someone not asking for forgiveness. Like, okay, you didn't ask me. Fine, I'll, I'll forgive you. And I would still love you, but from afar. I don't. You don't have to be in my life. Facts. Like forgive, forgiving someone does not necessarily mean that. Yeah, I forgive you, but yeah, come back in. No, you could definitely forgive someone and not have them in your life, and you could definitely love someone from afar. Like, and the like, I had to. I had to. And also, also, because I learned that everyone is a reflection of you. We are each other's mirrors. So please expand upon that because I'm like, bars, please, (laughs) please. I, I, I learned that we are all each other's mirrors. Whether there are good parts I see in you, bad parts I see in you, like all those parts are my own parts. And if I'm here, you know, shunning you because you're being a t- some type of way that I don't like, then I have to look within and see why that is affecting me. It, it asks myself, why is it that you being your certain way it's affecting me to this extent. And that's where the, that's where, um, you know, projections and all of that come in play. Like people do a lot of projections. And if we understood that we were, that, that we are each other's mirrors, we would be more compassionate amongst each other. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, you're right. Um, a lot of my audience won't know this, but and you know this. Um, you met me. I was heavy, super heavy. Mm-hmm. Wait, you met me before the accident or after the accident? Before we was cool before the accident. Right. <laughs> and <laughs> this is the reason why I tell you this because I was super big, lost mm-hmm. the weight. You can see it now. The weight, the weight is kept up over all these years. But you mentioned. People are, are 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 a reflection of yourself, and reason why that said bars that hit me so hard because I'm like, dang, I never put it in that way because when you lose the weight and you start to see that a lot of you are in other people, like you mentioned mirrors, like certain habits that people, I don't even effort, I don't give a damn, fat people, all right, fat people. When you when you used to be fat, and you see a lot of Fat people habits that you look like that is disgusting. I don't know why I did that. You know, no offense to fat people in general, but certain habits that fat people, all of them seem to like a lot of them seem to share the same like habits. And mm-hmm. I used to look at them, right? I'm looking like, especially people around my side, I'm looking like, dang nigga, like I just have this hate towards you. But it wasn't towards him. It was because I hated myself, who I was. And that was the mirror that I kept on seeing that, oh. There's something wrong with me. And you mentioned that. I was like, yo, that is so fact. Because once I realized that, oh, why do I have this issue against this big person? Oh, then I started doing the, the shadow work. And, oh, because you was that size. And you don't want to be that size. So you hate who you were so much that I had to learn to love every single part of myself. Some people only will mention who you are currently right now. You got to love who you were when you was one, who you were when you was a jerk. All, every all your parts. yeah all your parts because that's because these are it's part of your life path and you know one of my great examples i mentioned to people is pokemon and um you you are probably familiar with the basic one like charizard charmeleon whatever the basic yeah. one are you okay yeah yeah everyone's favorite squirtle. one is Ch- squirtle it, it, then you squirtle, squirtle right and you know squirtle evolved to world turtle world turtle evolved to blastoise right boom yeah you notice that he kept something in common as he was evolving. He kept the fact that he was a water type because that's who he is truly who he is as a person. But then you realize that certain things will not help him along the way. 
So he had to get bigger, the second form. He realized that yeah, my he water gun he had evolved to get the cannons on his shoulders. Mm -hmm. And he took the best of each evolution and made who he is at the end as Blastoise. Reason why I bring that up because we got to love every part of the stage of our life because each part teaches a lesson to become the best version of ourselves. And you mentioned that mirror thing and it's like, yo, like I'm still in that. Just know that I'm still in that. Like <laughs> I'm still in that. It's, I don't think it's a, it's a, I don't think it's something that just goes away. Just know that every interaction that you have is a divine one. And you mentioned, you know, you, you're mentioning um, Squirtle and he's, and he, and his, evo his evolution. Um, you know, I have a, a newsletter and on my newsletter, I, um, what's the new nails called? Know, it's, it's Gaia Priestess, G-A-E-A -E -A Priestess, um, translates into Earth Priestess. Um, in my, Not in my, <laughs> In my, in my, um, I, in my, in my last post, I, I wrote about grief and how I've been grieving for a long time and mm. I've been grieving and I've been, what I've been, what I noticed was that the, that what I was grieving was myself. I keep mm. evolving. I keep evolving. And I thought that I thought that I was grieving, you know, the people around me because, you know, as I evolve, my circles are changing. Yeah. And I and I thought I thought it was that, but I was genuinely grieving myself. And it was like I was like, oh snap, okay, that makes a lot of sense because I'm not the same girl. I'm not the same woman that I was five years ago. I'm not the same woman that I was ten years ago. So I had to come to terms with that, at, you know, if at, at the core, yes, I'm still the same, but I've evolved so much. And those parts of me helped me, helped me to get to where I'm at now. It, it, it helped me evolve to where I'm at now, but they're no longer like needed. Like, I don't, I don't need it. <laughs> mm, mm. So, what made you start the 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 newsletter, and how you how you came up with the name? Well, the newsletter, I wanted, I wanted to tell my story, and mm. I, I I wanted I wanted a platform. I'm like Jessica, you need to. I kept, I just kept thinking, I want to tell my story. I want to tell my story. I feel like other people will benefit from it. Um. I want to share all the knowledge that I have gained uh, with, and I was like, you know, you got to create your own opportunities. You can't keep waiting around thinking that someone's going to come and open the door for you. I was like, nah, you did, you did that for that for how long? And it didn't work out. Like you have to do this for yourself, do it for yourself, create your own opportunities, open your own doors. Facts. And I started like I started talking about like what I've been through, like oh, like from since the beginning of the, the the pandemic. Like I started like talking, and my name came about. Right? It was it was funny because I was thinking, I was like, yo, I need to, I wanna, I want something that truly define who I am and I want something that truly defines who I am I've been I, I definitely been a I've definitely been an advocate for Gaia Sophia mother mother nature mother earth mother our mother Gaia Sophia for so long like if you known me in I feel like, well, what, what year was that? I think maybe like five, six years ago, I did, I had a, I had a, a GoFundMe account raising money to like, to save the planet. Cause I'm like, yo, like, yeah, niggas need to wake up. Mother Earth is dying and 
somebody like you know i've always been an advocate for it for for her and it was something that just came if you look at my twitter right my twitter i have like my i have an image like my background image it it reads um what does it say it says something in the words of um warrior priestess earth goddess like and it's been sitting there yo i think for about seven eight years now i've had my twitter for 10 years so i think it's been sitting there for like seven eight Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i was i like it just came like i was like i was looking at earth priestess but of course it was taken so then Mm -hmm. i was like it was just something that just came to me i don't Mm want to say it came to me out the blue Mm -hmm. but yeah it came to me like out the blue and i was like oh shit yes that's what's gonna be and then when i googled it when i when i started to change all of my all of my um my handles i'm like oh Mm -hmm. it's available lay this is what's gonna be this is what's gonna be so it's across the board guy or priestess you can check me out on twitter Oh no 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 no! no. Um, not yet, not yet, not yet. We will do that at the end. We got there at the end. Like when you said Gaia, I almost thought about Captain Planet, and because ah! I'm a big, a big, well, big fan Captain of Captain Planet. He's, he's a, a hero. Yeah. Gonna take solution down to and, zero. And, that was my show. <laughs> and 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 um, Jesus Christ! Someone calling me. All right, give me give me two minutes. I'm keeping this in. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Okay, cool. Just come to the backyard and let me know when you um, and I'll come over the door for you. All right, bye. Mm-hmm. You want you gonna do a lot of editing? Yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> so um, she dead like, cause like um, I'm looking at this potential tenant outside. So dang, I don't want to stop this, but listen, we gotta have a part two. So please, Jessica, where can yes. people find you? You can find me on Twitter, mm-hmm. uh, Gaia Priestess. That's G A E A Priestess, P R I E S T E S S. And that's all across the board. That's IG, Twitter. Um, I have a newsletter. If you go on my IG page, the link is in my bio. You can subscribe. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. All right. I, I have a website, but that's, I have a website coming soon. All right, so soon. Jessica, thank you for giving me a dope guest. Sorry to rush you like this, but it's we're gonna okay, have a part two. Okay. So to everybody for watching the episode, thank you. Please, please, please keep on subscribing. Yo, Jess, man. Thank I'll you. Thank you. It. Thank you for allowing me to be your first Yo, guest of 2020. I'm no so problem. happy. No problem. So but grateful. Jess, <laughs> you keep up. You stay beautiful. You stay dope, and never let anybody take you off your high horse. Yo. It's the Mr. Black Show, man. I love y'all, man. Stay blessed. Later.